All right, so you can see a photo here. I've got the Samsung network video recorder and the Samsung professional display. This is where I'm up to right now. Um, the display is divided up into four sections, obviously for four cameras. Um, I just want to explain what I did to get to that point. So I'll pull up my little video here. Uh, the first thing is uh, to uh, get a uh, HDMI cable, uh, which didn't actually come with the network video recorder. So uh, unfortunately, I had a spare HDMI cable uh, in my drawer. And uh, I just used that to connect the network video recorder up to the Samsung uh, professional display. So pretty straightforward. There's your HDMI output. Just plug it in there. Probably don't really need to make a video showing how to plug a HDMI cable, um, but there's more to this video than me just doing this. I'll go I'll later. I go go into the menus uh, on the display and the menus on the uh, network recorder as well. But obviously, you've got to physically connect the two and power them up before you can do that. So the network, uh, the HDMI is on the on the side there. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, the display, uh, once you power up, go to the menu. So I'll just make a note here, buy another um, HDMI cable. I'll just skip over that. So okay, so you can see here, um, I press the little button at the back here. Obviously, the physical power cable is attached. And then you can see, I'll just get that up to full screen. And I'll just pause that. So it plays a nice little happy tune. Um, and this is what you see on the screen. This is uh, the setting up of the professional display. And I found that, that I had to get the remote control out and stick some batteries in that just so that I could select OK on this step one. So you can see that it's asking for the display orientation. And uh, again, find it the remote, putting the batteries in, that's not something you need a video for. So I'll just uh, skip over that. I'll have to make sure next time that I um, copy these videos across. It uh, fast forwards a lot better that way. All right, we'll get there. Okay. So now I've gone too far. This is what happens. So I've got the remote going and I just press the metal button and OK, go to the next step. And you can see there it's uh, looking for the network settings, either wireless or wired. I've gone for wired um, because with wireless I have to put in, for example, if I'm at work, I have to put in my work name and password. I really want to do that. I'd rather just stick with a hardwired connection. So you just got to uh, find a network cable and plug it into your RJ45 connection to the back. So I'm going to go off and uh, to my storeroom and get my net box of network cables, pull one out. The network connection is actually on the bottom uh, right-hand side. So I'll just skip over that. I'm just looking in the... Uh, paper documentation to confirm that, but I could have easily found it uh, just by looking. I wanted to make sure there was only one port because on a network recorder, there's a number of um, RJ45 connectors, but you can see here there's only one. That's in the a little spot there. 
<clears throat> okay, so plug that in. This video is probably going to go over five minutes. All right, so I've got a bunch of uh, network uh, ports down here on the lab bench, and um, fortunately, I picked one that was active. There's only two active ones out of these four. But I picked an active one. So we'll just get back down in front of the monitor. All right. So there you go. That's all connected now. So it's obviously on automatic DHCP. All right. So it's checking the connections now. You are connected to the internet. Good. Next step. Just press the uh, right hand arrow, date and time. So for this, I just got my laptop out and uh, just typed in current date and time on the internet. You know, so I'm using my Chromebook there. Now I'll skip a little bit over this. Basically, this is how I make videos. I record everything, and then I just try and fast forward through the uh, through the boring bits. So there you go. You can see there's my date and time there. That's current. Now I'm a little surprised. There must be a way of configuring the display so that it picks up the date and time off the network cable because I have seen other gear that you can do that. You shouldn't have to manually enter that in. But maybe if you're just using a switch on its own, um, maybe that may not have be able to provide the, ne the network time and date. So maybe that's why they've got it this way. Okay, so I'm assuming I've managed to do that. Press next. There you go, you can see it's correct. Now I got a little confused here. Uh, this is play via. Um, I guess you could say I'm a bit lazy. I don't like to sit down and re read a whole manual before I do something. I just tend to dive in. Of course, you should read the warnings uh, because if you don't read those, you can break gear right away, and that's not good. So I had read warnings, but, um, yeah, uh, I'll just um, play this one. So... I guess you've got to kind of understand what the product is intended for. Uh, this is just professional display. So it's used in shops um, to advertise things for sale. And that's probably what the Magic Info is designed to do. I um, Initially, I selected uh, the URL one. And because it's got the network port connection, uh, it can display a... Uh, you cannot type in a URL address. I'm just going to try and fast forward to the good stuff. So I'm just looking through the manual for some information. I didn't end up finding anything. So again, I did select the URL launcher uh, and ask for a web address. I'm expecting that to come up somewhere along here. Yeah, and uh, so you can see there it's asking me to put in a URL address, which I didn't have one, so I uh, cancelled out of that. Now it is possible that the network video recorder does, uh, you can interface it through a web uh, web address, but I'm not dealing with that right now. So this is the layout of the magic something something um, display. Unfortunately, my glass is not showing that very well. Um, but I just, 
basically I played around with this menu for ages and that might be only three or four minutes and then I finally realized that um, I couldn't find anything in here to switch it to HDMI input and that was really frustrating me and then I realized let's see if I can get the remote Okay, let's see if I can show you. This is the remote here. I realized that I pressed the return button and then I pressed, then it showed source, the different sources at the top of the screen, and then I could switch it to HDMI. So that was uh, a bit of uh, frustration until I figured that out. Now just start the second video. There's going to be a bit of sound when I start this call. Oh, very loud. So, I'll just skip over the going through this menu because it's not really relevant to what I'm trying to show, which is just to get the display from the network recorder. Uh, and you can just see I'm just blindly staggering around this menu. All very interesting, but not if you want to get the job done. So I'm looking at the uh, the printout, a piece of paper they give. Now I'll see if I can find the bit. Uh, okay, there it is. The so I'll just you can see the H. There it is. There, right. All right, so there you go there. So I press that backspace button and then unfortunately it's not, there you go, I've got it. Then you can see source, HDMI, AV, component, PC. And that's what you want. And basically I just scrolled across to HDMI and then you get in, then you can see the actual uh, network video recorder uh, setup menu. And once you see that, I'm not particularly impressed how I recorded this bit. I was going to be off the screen all the time here. But I have to pick up the uh, remote for the network video recorder. And you can see the easy setup. So I just pressed pretty much OK for everything except date and time, my instant date and time, uh, English language next. Um, now I created a new administrator password here, which I wrote down, and I haven't. I've deliberately not shown that in the video because who knows what? Who knows who is watching the video, right? You only tell people who need to know those sorts of things. So I just skip over that, and eventually, hoping I'm going to get back to the work here. All right, so here we go. There we go. So there's network connections. When you want to pause something, can't hardly get that. So there's network. There's network for camera one and server network addresses. So I haven't bothered anywhere with that. I'm assuming I can go back and change those settings if I need to. And then we've got date and time. So I haven't really, I haven't done anything there. I've just pressed next. All right, now I've gone back in the menu. Not sure why I'm doing that. Uh, probably, probably trying to find some information about the network settings, and I end up skipping that. And here you go, you got to date and time. I found the date was correct, but the time was out. So it's easy enough to edit the time. Again, using my little uh, uh, online web browser to find the correct time. Did that. And uh, press OK. 
and next. And then there you go. There's the final shot showing all our four screens for cameras which are currently not connected. Okay, thank you.